Hi everyone, it's Rio Cloud Sync. In today's session, we're looking at the optimization agent in Entry ID, which is powered by Security Copilot. Now, conditional access policies are becoming a priority for many organizations, and the optimization agent helps you ensure all users and applications are protected by those conditional access policies. Now, it recommends policies and changes based on best practices aligned with zero trust methodology and also Microsoft's own learnings. Now, this optimization agent evaluates policies such as requiring MFA, enforcing device-based controls such as device compliance, app protection policies, and also ensures that you have policies such as blocking legacy authentication and device code flow implemented in Enter ID. Now, before we start off, there are a few prerequisites around, uh, let's say, leveraging and utilizing the optimization agent. One of those prerequisites being you have to provision an SEU, an SEU meaning security compute unit, which is a pre-provisioned compute capacity, um, which allows you to leverage natural language processing across all your different Microsoft 365 security services. Now, the way this is built is it's built per hour, based on the pre-provision capacity you've purchased from Microsoft. Now, there is the ability to leverage overage within Security Copilot, which is build, um, uh, build based on your current usage rather than uh, pre-provision capacity. And now, this finger in the air is around $4 per hour per SEU, and is a minimum prereq to have free SEUs um, exist in your organization. Now, the way we configure SEUs is typically through the usage monitoring pane, or if you were to access Security Copilot for the first time, it will take you through creating the or provisioning the capacity, which you would have to define the uh, the amount of SEUs you want to provision, which, like I said, the minimum prereq is typically free. Uh, where you want the data to reside, in which geographical location, and where do you want the prompts to be evaluated uh, within? Is it you want them to be evaluated within the UK, um, Asia, US, um, Australia? You have several options. Now, just to reiterate, you can create the SEUs within Security Copilot itself. You can also create or provision the SEUs in Microsoft Azure. Now, in Security Copilot, what I've done is I've provisioned two SEUs, which of course, like I said, are built per hour. Now, I can change the units of the units I've already provisioned, so I can decrease and also increase based on uh, the applicable charge um, defined here. Now, once again, I can enable overage, which is a slightly higher cost, uh, which you can leverage at peak times and when there is changes in demand uh, for compute capacity. Now, if I want to deprovision the compute capacity, I can scroll down to the ellipsis on the bottom right and also delete the capacity um, if not required. Now, if I was to provision a new capacity, I could press new capacity. I can give it a subscription name. So I'd select the subscription, in this case, being SPF Azure plan, uh, the particular resource group where I want the uh, compute capacity to reside. Um, in this case, I've created a resource group called Security Copilot V1. Um, the capacity name, which I may give it uh, security uh, capacity uh, V3. Uh, where, like I said, I want the prompt to be evaluated in, and at this moment in time, there are four locations, whether or not that be Australia, Europe, UK, or US, in here, I'm going to say UK, um, and if there is a demand in, uh, let's say, compute capacity in this particular region, I can allow um, uh, Security Copilot to run the, uh, the prompt evaluation against a different geographical uh, region, and if I was to allow that, I'd have to tip the box here. And then, of course, where do I want to provision this in UK South, uh, UK uh, North, uh, sorry, UK West, um, uh, North um, America, Asia Pacific, China, wherever in the world, I can pick the capacity region. And then, of course, associate that to a particular workspace within Security Copilot. Here, I've already got a workspace in place, which will be the default one. And of course, um, because I'm time conscious, I've already provisioned the SEU, therefore I've already associated it to a workspace. And you can't have more than one capacity associated to uh, a workspace at one given time. And then, of course, I'll define the amount of SEUs I need or require. Same principle from an Azure perspective. I could go into portal.azure.com and select Microsoft Security Copilot, and I can create a uh, capacity. Right, where, of course, I'll go through the same workflow process of associating it with a subscription, uh, a resource group, 
and defining whether or not I want it to be able to evaluate prompts outside of my given region or not. Now, if I go back into Security Copilot, I can monitor the usage over time. So here I can see where I've leveraged SEUs um, across these uh, Security Copilot services, whether or not that be in the Security Copilot standalone experience, which is where I am now, whether or not it be in the embedded experience, because as you well know, Security Copilot is embedded in Entra, Intune, Purview, Microsoft Threat Intelligence, so on and so forth. Um, or whether or not I'm using SEU uh, capacity um, uh, coinciding with agents, like autonomous agents. Um, and there are several at the moment. I think there's six currently in either public preview or GA. Um, and the one we're focusing on today is the enter optimization agent. However, there is the DLP triage agent, which is found in Microsoft Purview. There, there is one for information on rights management. Um, the list goes on. But he, here today, we're talking about the enter optimization agent. And here we can see this first entry, I consume 0.9 SEUs um, at this time, at this date. Uh, this was a manual action being a user prompt in the standalone experience in Security Copilot. Um, and I asked it, um, what groups is this uh, particular individual um, residing? Or what groups are associated to this particular individual? Um, and it used the plugin, which is Microsoft Entra, um, to, uh, to go through that process of retrieval of mentored generation to fetch that information and present it to me in a uh, nicely formatted way. Now, the second line item here you see here is where I've used the optimization agent in Enter ID. Um, so it's used 0.1 SCUs, okay, which is uh, relatively okay. Um, bear in mind this is a sandbox instance. So I've got a few conditional access policies, um, probably 10 to 11 users at, at at most um, with that it doesn't really need to use an extensive um, amount of compute capacity um, to view policy coverage uh, conflicting conditional access policies so on and so forth um, so this is a way to see that compute capacity and how it's being used now if i come back i've got the option for agents on the left hand side in here, I can see those agents I was talking about. So today, what we're focusing on is the conditional access optimization agent, but there are several other agents. This is currently what's this is what's currently available to myself, right? However, there are six uh, native agents available. Um, however, they are being pushed out on a periodic uh, uh, kind of wave release, right? So I may not have all the agents, but there are all, there are agents outside of my test tenant. Now, if I was to go to this agent, what it would take me to is the Entra dashboard. Right? So if I was to navigate to entra.microsoft.com or click on that optimization agent, it would take me to the Entra dashboard. And here we see this new pane for agents. In agents, I can enable the agent for the first time. I've already enabled this because, of course, I'm time conscious that I'm doing this, uh, let's say, self-paced in real time. Um, but here it will take you through the wizard to enable the agent, which is just a tick box. right? We then select view details once we provision the agent. Now, upon initial setup of the entry optimization or uh, sorry, the conditional access optimization agent, it won't consume any SEUs. And this agent is set to run periodically every 24 hours. That's why where you see agent is active, you can see it finished at this time. This was the first time I ran the agent, which was today. And the next schedule for this agent to run is tomorrow at around the same time. Like I said, every 24 hours, this agent is gonna run. Not only that, there are a few more prereqs around this uh, before we get going. One, you need to have an Entry IDP1 license available in your organization, because of course, conditional access relies on Entry ID Plan 1 capabilities. You must have, of course, SEUs, which we've just been through. You need to be either a global admin or a security admin, right? Um, and if you're uh, looking at conditional access policies associated or in line with uh, Intune capabilities, then of course you need uh, either Business Premium or Intune Plan 1 licensing. Also, I highly recommend you avoid, you, avoid, you, avoid using an account uh, to set up the agent which requires a PIM elevation, which of course is part of Entry ID Plan 2, um, because really we want to use a static role assignment uh, to make the most out of this, this optimization agent. Now, 
Other than that, it'll give me a bit of a breakdown around what this agent actually does. And like I said, it runs 24 hours. It'll look at gaps and coverage issues across the organization in line with your conditional access policies, which currently exist. Not only that, we'll also recommend conditional access policies you could potentially create. So increase your override and security posture, but reduce that exposure from adversaries and malicious artifacts currently out there today. So I provisioned this for the first time, and it's given me um, a high level synopsis of what it's identified. Now, what it's found is that there are 15 unprotected users discovered. There are over 418 unprotected apps, zero sign-ins protected, because of course we haven't implemented any CA policies using the optimization agent at this moment in time. And around 0.02 SEU units have been consumed. Now, when I see recent suggestions, you can see it's um, provided me a recommendation based on that initial scan. Now, this recommendation is to turn on a new policy to require password change for high risk users. I'm assuming it's using identity protection at that moment in time, which requires, of course, Entry ID Plan 2. The action taken by the agent is to create a new report only policy. So it's already created a CA policy for me in report only, and it will always put it in report only. It will not enable policies for you unless you review the suggestion and accept the enforcement, right? This is a workflow approval approach. Now it generated this recommendation at this time and the current state of this recommendation is not applied because I haven't approved of uh, Z implementation at this moment in time. We can also see the recent activity around when this agent was ran and the usage uh, associated. Now, if I was to select review suggestion, it will bring me up a side, card, a side card of which I can view the policy recommendation in a bit more detail and the potential user impact around pushing out this particular conditional access policy. So this policy requires users identified as high risk to change their password before access and resources. And I can review the signing logs to verify the new user signing activities because of course this is put in the conditional access policy and report only. So I can view the policy impact card and can see actually over the period of time this recommendation has been, uh, let's say, identified uh, and also the conditional access policy has been put in report only, what would the coverage across and amongst my organization be? So I can see that potential impact before implementing ZCA policy. Now, I can scroll down, I can see the conditions around the conditional access policy it's re recommended me to, to, to implement. So I can see that it's given it the name required password change for high risk users, put it in reports only mode, so it's not enabled at this moment in time. It's targeting um, all users, all cloud apps, and um, based on the user being high risk, it's gonna require MFA, require password change, and also require a new sign-in for each session. Um, I think what's quite cool here is also giving it a tag, which is created by conditional access optimization agent. And if you know anything about conditional access policies, um, there are different types of CA policies. You've of course got the custom CA policies you can create manually, right? Um, you've got the conditional access policies which have been created by Microsoft, being the Microsoft uh, managed conditional access policies. And then of course now you've got conditional access policies being created by the optimization and autonomous agents, which are now tagged as uh, conditional access optimization agent conditional access policies. Now, what we could do here is we can view agents for activity and we can view its topology and its logic around recommending this policy should be implemented. So we can see here the conditional access optimization agent scan the tenant starting on this time at this date. The agent completed running on this time and this date, identified zero new users, and two new applications were added in the last 24 hours. The agent generated one new policy in report only mode and the policy update suggested based on zero trust best practices for your review. The agent also reviewed all eight existing CA policies, found no overlapping scopes that warranted consolidation at this point. So like I said, not only is it going to look at coverage, it's also going to look at conflict of, of conditions and, uh, and, and interest between different policies. Um, and on the right hand side, we can scroll across the logic and see exactly how it came up with this recommendation. So initially you can say, OK, cool, we initiated the task. Um, it's looking at any policy drifts between the different uh, policies and if there's any uh, recommendations around policy consolidation. Uh, then found no users in the last 24 hours have been uh, added to my intro ID directory. It scanned any new, new applications like app registrations. Also found the, you know, there's no uh, similar policies uh, amongst the eight policies currently created. Determined all users are in scope of at least one conditional access policy. 
so on and so forth, then it came up with the, the recommendation of, um, of creating a report only uh, CA. So if we go into CA quickly on the left hand side, policies, you can see that conditional access policy is put in report only and you can see it's also highlighted as a agent suggestion. So we can click into this policy and as in any policy we create, it will just take us back to that wizard where we can turn on the policy. So this is really useful. Now, if we go back to agents and view details about this agent, we can see the audit again, uh, the overall suggestions, because if there was a multitude of suggestions, you'd really want to consolidate that so you can work through that uh, on a kind of a priority basis. And then of course the settings. Now we can turn off that uh, periodic scan every 24 hours if needs be. So we can, you know, let's say manually uh, run the scan rather than uh, periodically run the scan. And we can also uh, ask it you know, or define what it should be able to check. So do you want it to check user accounts and you know user coverage? Do you want it to check application coverage? And also the type of positions it requires over your directory, whether or not that be read write access. Um, and just like Microsoft 365 Copilot and the changes around that, we can also give it instructions. Now these instructions uh, may be, um, you know, like, a, like it says there, exclude break that glass from your recommendations or exclude this particular user identity from any recommendations moving forward. Um, because there may be a, a certain account, certain identity, certain device or some sort of peripheral you may want to exclude in those recommendations. Um, and it just makes life easier for you moving forward. So that is the enter optimization agent. Um, there are a few limitations around this and the fact that it can only review up to 150 users and up to 100 applications in a single run. Um, um, you know, suggestions from the agent can't be customized or written at this moment in time. Um, and like I said, the scan is limited for a 24 hour period. Um, and just to reiterate, like I said, the initial scan does not consume SEUs. Um, it's only, uh, you know, when it starts going through that logic um, and providing these recommendation is when it then starts consuming the security compute units. Um, but this was just a quick overview on the conditional access optimization agent. Hopefully that was of use. Uh, like I said, this was built on security copilot as, uh, as kind of a back end uh, compute infrastructure. Uh, but from an agent perspective, it's, it's very simplistic, right? You run the agent, um, it gives you a list of recommendations, you either implement those recommendations or you don't, and you've got the ability to uh, configure that slightly and also review the, the overriding logic. Uh, but any questions, please do let me know. Um, and thank you very much.